Good afternoon, folks. Um, good evening to you in Liberia. Good morning if you're in certain parts of Asia. Um, I, I, uh, I've watched, you know, I often done watch Mobile Model, but today I waited with fervent anticipation uh, to watch Mobile Model. The, chairman of the CDC because I was tipped about some of the things Baba Molo would speak about, would address. And uh, I even mentioned some of the things this morning on the radio that he would call for a dismissal of certain key people, Samuel Twer, but apparently Baba Molo does not have enough balls to mention Samuel Twer's name and Nathaniel McGill's name. So he just said certain key people need to be fired. So I listened to Mr. Molo, I watched him, and my reaction is this. Listen to me, folks. As a former insider of the CDC, knowing Mama Molo very well, as, as knowing him very, very well, this is it. The entire press conference today was in reaction to the December 30th protest. And Mama Malu did not hide it. He made it very, very clear that it was about the protest. For the first time, Mama Malu and his CDC did not sound like the normal CDC that we've been hearing since they came to power two years ago. Today, Mama Malu is crying and is speaking out as if he were an executive of the COP. Mola Malu said, among other things, that we are needs to fire so many people. Without calling the names, we know he was talking about people like Nathaniel McGill. He was talking about Samuel Twer. Mola Malu went on to say <laughs> that uh, uh, the president should stop flying in private jet. Well, basically, that's what he said. Because he said, the only people in government that should fly business class should be the president, the vice president, the chief justice, the pro tem, the speaker, and those six individuals. Other than that, Mohamed Malu says everybody should fly economy, including the president. He said they all should fly business class. So basically, Mohamed Malu now agrees with us that the president should not fly private jets. Mohamed Malu went on to say that they should investigate all officials of government who have acquired massive properties overnight. Well, Mama Malu is referring to the president. We all know the president has acquired a lot of properties over, overnight. And Mama Malu is calling for a swift investigation of all officials of government who have acquired massive real estate overnight since coming to power. If Mama Malu is seriously talking about people being investigated for acquiring properties overnight, the first person on that list would be George Man and Weah. <laughs> George Weah is the one man who has acquired massive properties overnight. That is, a, that is a situation. So there is no way Mother Malu can be calling for people to be investigated for acquiring properties overnight. Properties, uh, you know, you know that, uh, you know, that cannot be explained, financially explained, because they didn't, they didn't have the money. Mother Malu goes on to say that the CDC, that the economic hardship in the country should not be blamed on the past government, and this government needs to own up to the situation and, and, and and work to address the problems. Oh, now Moba Malu agrees that George Bia is responsible for the hardship in the country. Moba Malu said also that the government is a failure because he said the government has let the people. <laughs> oh my God. Moba Malu said the government has let the people down. And so the government should stop playing the bling game. The Moba Malu says that the, the government, the president, should reach out to dialogue with us. But let me tell you something. The COP, as an institution, is not interested in dialoguing with the, the president. Let me repeat. The COP, as an institution, is not interested in dialoguing with George Weah. We are not interested. We don't want to have a conversation with George Weah around anything. What we want George Weah to do, if he wishes to dialogue, is to, be, is to negotiate his exit strategy. We can provide him immunity from prosecution, uh, we can ensure perhaps we can make a consideration uh, uh, for certain reasons to allow him to keep some of his properties that he illegally acquired using our money. Those are the things 
uh, about which we might be inclined to dialogue. But whether to dialogue on this criminal of a president staying in power and continuing to embarrass our, our country, having the international community rebuking us and writing all these letters, like from the American government telling us that we are forfeiting $15 million in matching funds for the maintenance and repair of existing roads because the government, we have stole $6.5 million from the road fund account. We are not interested in dialoguing with George Bia other than his exit. That is what we are hoping to dialogue and over. We're, we're not. The man is a thief. The man has to go. So Mara Malu today, let me tell you something. I'm told George Bia is vexed. Who, who cares? If you like letting go jump, jump in the two river. We do, we do not care for the CDC. Mother Mullen knows that they are angry in their party. Many of the people are very disappointed. They're very disillusioned. They are frustrated. They voted for this man who doesn't know his left from his, from his right to be president. They believe him to be a messiah. They thought he would have saved him. Instead, what he's doing is only about amassing wealth for himself. Mother Mullen to be talking about people being investigated for amassing wealth and amassing real estate. Are you freaking kidding me? You're talking about George Weir. You're talking about people should fly only business class, only six pieces of government, the top six people should fly business class and everybody else should fly economy. You are too much, you are too much. There he goes and I'm talking about we should dialogue, the president should dialogue. Oh, now you know we should dialogue? When some of us threw the idea around that we might be inclined to a dialogue, what was your reaction? It was one of rebuke and repudiation. That's what you did. When we were open to dialoguing, after June 7th, when we presented our petition statement to the president several months ago, and he has refused to take a look at it, and today you want to talk about dialogue when it is late, when millions of Liberians are living in abject poverty, dehumanizing conditions, high inflation rate, high food uh, food inflation, when people are losing their jobs left and right, com 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 companies are folding up, local and, and foreign, and, 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 and investors are refusing to come to the country. And then you are talking about dialogue, a dialogue at this point. We are not interested in a dialogue with a criminal president. We want him out. So you're wasting your, your time, Baba Malu. Baba Malu, let me, let, me, let me tell you something. Baba Malu thinks he's smart. Baba Malu knows Akawa's Bay was turning away the other day. He went to try to see the president to turn him away. Finna Bono denied Akawa's Bay a meeting with the president. He turned, she turned Akawa's Bay away. Akara's going to meet the president. He's very disillusioned, very disappointed. And uh, Moaba Molu himself cannot meet the president. All those things Molu said in that press statement today, if Molu had a good relationship with George Bia, Molu would not, would not have said any of those things. He would not have said any of those things. They have no good relationship with the president, so they have retreated to the party. They are still, they are using now, their strategy is to use the gullibility of those who are still loyal to the CDC to use them as a cushion, as a launch pad to the president. That is their strategy. They're not in good books with McGill. They're not in good books with Twer. Twer, McGill, and George Bia, they run a cabal. They run a tracker. And so that is what they've done now. They have retreated to the party, and they are using the party, and those who are still loyal to the party, who are who are disillusioned with George Bia, very disappointed with the, with the man they voted for. So Mama, Mama Malu thinks now, by going to judge, by going to the CDC, and sounding like he's speaking for Mama Malu sounding like Henry Costa today. Mama Malu sounding like, like us. We're talking about President stop flying private debt. Malu said it. People should be investigated for, for corruption. Malu said it. Uh, uh, <laughs> Malu said everything that we've been saying except that we have to step down. So basically, Mama Malu made the case for George Bia to step down. Let me tell you something. You poor partisans who are sitting there chanting slogans for Malu. Malu makes a hell of a whole lot of money from the CDC, from this government. He makes a lot of money. That's how he drives the cars that he drives. That's how he flies business class everywhere he goes. And that is where that is why he has these Gucci bags and these uh, Prada bags and those expensive watches. It is how he pays for them because he's benefiting from the government. You sit there and be gullible and let him fool you and let, him, and let him make you think that he's doing it for your interest. He's, he's not. You know what? He's afraid. The one commonality that Molu and, 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 and Twer and, and McGill and we are still have, the one issue that they have commonality on is that they want to continue to remain in power. They want to remain in power. So why Molu and we are do not see eye, on, eye to eye, why Molu and Akara's grave 
and 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 Miguel on the other side and Troy on the other side are not in good books while they will no influence with the, with the people who call the shots. But one thing they all have in common is that their fervent desire to remain in power, to be enjoying what they're exploiting the rest of you. And so the, while they may fuss and fight among themselves, while Molu is very disillusioned that he has no influence with the president, but the one thing Mother Molu has interest in is that George has to remain in power so that he, Molu, can continue to live the life that he has been living, the life that he used to dream about, and he could never possibly have because he has nothing for himself, never worked for himself, never built anything for him for, him, for himself. The only way he could possibly lead the lifestyle that he leads with the expensive watches and the nice cars and, and, the, and the business class travels and the Gucci bags is because George Weir is in power. So Molu wants Weir to stay in power because Weir gives him that lifestyle. Now you poor party, 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 partisans who are catching hell, who have absolutely nothing, no jobs, and you're dealing with high food prices like the rest of us in the, in the country, you are dealing with uh, uh, an overall economic hardship brought on by the incompetence and the reckless attitude of this government you brought to power. Mama Malu has to now retreat and pretend as though he's standing with, 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 with you. After that press statement, he gets in his air, air, air conditioned Mercedes Benz or his Range Rover or his, uh, or his Infinity SUV and he drives away to Boulevard Palace where he sits there with his friends and they drink wine or champagne. And eat expensive meals. You see, then he fools you. He makes you feel that he's doing it for you. He's not doing it for you. He's afraid of the protest because he's, he's afraid that the protest might bring the government down. Have you ever heard Robert Molu sound conciliatory calling for the president to dialogue with the COP? Have you ever heard Robert Molu doing that? He did it for the first time today, calling on George Weah because Robert Molu is afraid that if George Weah goes, so does his lifestyle. So, so does the, 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 the business class travel. So does the, uh, uh, he will not be able to maintain those expensive apartments he lives in. Mama Molu has two, uh, two, uh, two, uh, two, uh, two apartments. He pays no less than $2,000 for each of those apartments. So Mama Molu wants to maintain that, that lifestyle. You think he wants to lose that? Why George Weah steals and flies private jets and build con con condominiums, Mama Molu can hustle and uh, with friends in the government, people in the, in the government, and he can peddle his influence as chairman of the party, and he can make money to buy his Range Rover and to and to and to, and to buy his uh, Infinity QX spot, QS50, and can also drive around in his Mercedes Benz and can fly a commercial and, and, and can fly a uh, business class. So you see, it's a win-win here. Malu doesn't like we are Wea doesn't like Malu, but we are wants Malu to be in power. I mean, uh, Malu wants we are to be in power because if we are in power, Malu gets what he what he what, what he wants. If Wea is not in power, Malu doesn't get what Malu, Malu wants. You don't even know Mama Malu. I know the man. <laughs> so the two of them don't like each, each other. Carlos Ray, on the other hand, makes a lot of noise. He's a freaking parrot. He blabbers. He speaks. He spills out gibberish. An absolute gibberish in his bad, broken English. And the, the chanting is this, 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 uh, the, 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 this facade of a thing, this false ego in the eyes, false sense of importance. Calling him the general. Now he feels bad. His ego is hurt. A small man with a big ego with a, with a Napoleon com complex. He feels bad that he doesn't have any clout, no influence with the, with the president. So he's hurt. So what does he do? Mama Molu and the Bay have never gotten along. They, they, they don't like each other. In fact, the reason Mama Molu was expelled from the CBC was because he wrote an article which was published in which he said he called Mama Molu and, I mean, called Akaros Bay and John Bay kissing. He said that. Mama Molu wrote the article. It was because of the article that Mama Molu was expelled from the CDC. When we went to the CDC in 2011, went to myself, it was I. Mama Molu made friends with me, and I went and begged my boss, Ambassador Winston Tupman, then Senator Bear of the Party, to beg George Weir to have Mama Molu reinstated. Molu, we are agreed half heartedly. Molu, we are, has never liked Molu. He has never liked Molu. From, from the time Mama Molu wrote that thing against George Weir, that he called George Weir and Carlos Bay kissing each other. Weir has never liked Malu. He has never forgiven Malu. So Malu knows that. So Malu doesn't like uh, Weir. Weir doesn't like Malu. And Malu doesn't like Akaros. And Akaros doesn't like Malu. But today, they have a commonality of purpose. The commonality of purpose is that they don't have influence with the president. They don't. And they want to have influence with the president. And McGill and Twer have built a shield, the Great Wall, the Wall of Jer Jer Jericho. 
They build a wall around George Mia. And what about the accounts? They don't like that. They don't like that at all. It hurts them. And so today, the two of them gather. And who introduces Paul before he speaks? Carol's great. Woo! Oh, yes, because they have a commonality of purpose. The commonality of purpose is we don't have access to George Mia. And then Thomas Fala is there. Thomas Fala is the chairman on the Ways and Finance Committee in the House of Representatives. A very strategic position. Thomas, Thomas Fala too, is very unhappy because they don't have access to the president. It makes them very un unhappy. So that is why all of them have gathered together, friends of the same fellow, and they've gathered together, and they formed a pact. Let's go to the party, use the gullible partisans, make them feel that we're doing this for them, blast the president, call for the president to do certain things that we know the public wants, that you want. You think Mohamed doesn't know that Georgia is a trend and popular? You think Mohamed does, does not know people are hurting in the country? You think Mohamed is a damn angry with Georgia? He knows all of those things. Akaros, they, know, they know all of those things. But have they ever admitted those things? Today was the first time ever that they admitted that. You know why? Two reasons. Number one, since George Weah has decided to not listen to us, we will use the party to gain leverage. We'll use the party to compel him to listen to us. Since we realize the COP might cause the government to fall because they are popular and many of our partisans who are angry with us, whether the way George Weah is running the country, have retreated from our party and are now supporting the COP cause. And so let's go and try to make them feel that we are, that we understand how they, how they feel. We feel their pains. And let's pretend to be in sympathy with them. Let's pretend to care about their concerns. And let's speak to those issues. Bam! They call a press conference. Then they say, the COP has the right to assemble. This, oh, 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 you know we have the right to assemble? Now you realize we have the right to assemble? Now you realize that the president needs to, to dialogue with the COP? The COP wants no dialogue with a criminal? We are like America. We don't dialogue. We don't negotiate with terrorists. The president is a thief. He's a criminal. He's a, he's a, he's a disgrace. He's come back. We want him out. No dialogue. So we know you people. We know you people so well. We know you people. In the words of uh, one of your jokers, the clown, what's his name? The undocumented illegal alien, uneducated, undocu undocumented illegal alien who sits and sleeps in somebody's basement and living 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 room. Uh, I would like to say it is O V E N. Now I'm, I'm not making a mistake. I'm simply quoting the guy. The guy we're trying to spell O. He said O V E N. Oven. So O V E N. It is O V E N. But see this. Oven. It is Oven. <laughs> so the party has crumbled. The leadership structure has no access to the president. McGill and Tua run the show. George Ria is is disconnected from his party. He is disillusioned. He is worried about this uh, about the. Uh, protest that's going to happen, and the CDC is afraid that George Weah may step down. Ordinary parties of the CDC really don't care. Most of them have withdrawn their support from George Weah because they know that we are is a failure. So Mama, Mama Molu now is exploiting the gullibility of the few who are still loyal or are angry with the way the country is being run. Everybody is hurting the country. Seditions, everybody. Everybody's angry. And so that is a strategy. That's what the whole press conference was about today. It was a simple thing. How can we make seditions understand that we're drawing a line, that we are not George Beer, that we are not Samuel Twain? They are afraid. I saw fear oozing out of my brother Mullah Mullah today as he read this thing. I saw fear. Fear. Fear of the unknown. Fear of what will happen on December 30th. That the Liberian people will come out. Seditions and non seditions alike will come out on December 30th. And they will cause the president to step down. So I saw that fear. And Mama Molu is trying to protect his lifestyle. That poor boy who was getting help, who was sick in 2016, I had to raise 5,000 US dollars from, from, from Ben and I Ewing for his medical bill. He did a surgery. He nearly died. I saw that boy who used to come to me to put gas in his, in his car. Today, he flies business class. He, he buys $3,000 traveling bags, Gucci, Gucci bags, suit, 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 suitcases. I saw that boy. I saw the boy who drives the, who used to have that old Dutch, uh, that old, first he used to drive the, the that old Jeep, Jeep Cherokee. And then he went to the the, the station wagon uh, Dutch. Today he used a Range Rover, Mercedes Benz, 
and 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 and, and it looks for it gave me the QS50 or a QS45, and I saw that boy who wants to maintain that lifestyle, who wants to protect that life lifestyle. That is what I saw today. I saw an Akira's gray. It diminished Akira's gray. His ego has been hurt. He no longer has a voice. No access to George Weah. Finn Nabuna turned him away the other day. He could not see George Weah. I saw the little boys calling for help, crying out. Yes, falling back on the partisans of CBC, trying to play to the gallery and trying to pretend that they care about the partisans. They don't really care. They don't really freaking care. We know their theatrics and their tactics. But I say to you, Sivisha, we understand you. We know you're hurting. Georgia will not listen. The man is a thief. The man is a criminal. You need to come out on December 30th and let's dislodge this thief from power. The way to do it is to assemble in our hundreds of thousands or our tens of thousands, and we will stay there. I mean, let me tell you something. All of you who are writing stuff about against the COP, you're pretending that you have problem with the way the government is being run. You criticize the government, whether you are in the media. You criticize the government. You know what's happening in the country. You understand everything that's happening in the country. But at the same time, you are against the, C this, this, the COP for your own selfish reasons. It is your business. We do not care. What you cannot be. No amount of articles, no, no amount of live face, face, Facebook videos you do against the pro protest is going to hold water. You know why it will not hold water? Because when the people are suffering, when the people are suffering, that is the strongest thing that we have. We have had evidence of the hardship of the bad governance that is happening in the country. No amount of articles you write, no amount of live face, Facebook videos you do, no amount of postings you do, nobody will pay attention. That is the reason why when we speak, we get thousands and thousands of views. We are the only one in the entire country that gets this kind of attention. We are the only one. When I say we, I mean Henrik, Henrik, Henry, Henrik Costa. And you know why? Because we preach a message that resonates with the broad minds of the people. That is why we get the biggest attention. That is why we get it. And and the reason why, and you are wondering, you you, you think people come watch me or people come listen to me every morning in their tens of thousands on the internet every every day, you think because I speak well, you think that's the reason why? That is not the reason why. It is because we speak in the way we speak to the issues that are dear to the people. We connect to the people in a way that nobody else currently does. Nobody else. We speak to those issues. And call it just beating. Call it me sounding egotistical. Call it whatever. And if you want to endear yourself to the people, to the hearts and minds of the, of the people, speak as some of us do. Speak to the issues in a way that we do. That is the reason why we have all this traction. So those of you who write all the stuff you write, those of you who say all the things you say against us, you're wasting your time. As long as we, we, we remain on the side of the people, the people will love us, they will support us. That is why some of you will grow old, you will die, you will never get the support that we have because we stand on the side of the people. As flawed and imperfect as we are, we stand on the side of the people. I see some politicians, some opposition politicians. They're having political town hall um, uh, uh, meetings here in America. I saw one the other day. I was so, so, so sorry for them. I mean, the room was empty, empty. And you're still talking about your plans. You're running for president. The people are talking about how they can feed themselves now. And you are talking about what you would do when you elect the president. You think the people want to hear, hear that? Listen, listen to me. Do you know why polit polit politicians, people running for president, have town hall meetings in America that are empty? Do you know why they are addressing empty halls? They are addressing empty halls because the people don't want to hear what they have to say. They don't want to hear what they have to say about why they should be president or why they should be elected president four years. People are thinking about how they can send their kids to school now. You're talking about four years down the road. People are thinking about how they can feed their family. Depressing, dehuman, uh, dehumanizing uh, 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 conditions that, com that confront and afflict the people. Those are the issues they are concerned about. And you were talking about how your 10-point plan to fix the country, your connections abroad, your business savvy, uh, your, 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 your business acumen, your experience in this and that. People, people are not interested in that nonsense. Nobody wants to hear that stuff right now. That is the reason why you don't get traction. That is the reason why when you have town hall meetings in America and other places and you're talking about how you want to be president and what it is you want to do, nobody is interested. What they are interested in is redemption, economic and political redemption. They are interested in how this nightmare, 
this malady of bad governance, of corruption, of, 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 of abuse of human, human rights and constitutional rights, uh, uh, that is what they are concerned about. How soon it can come to an, to an end. And that is why the traction we have, you do not have. That is why the appeal we have, you do not have. That is the reason why we pull crowd in the way you cannot. That is why when we come on, in no time, we have thousands of people viewing. That is why when we do one little video, we get 50, 60,000 people to view. That is why you will never have that, because you are concerned about making yourself president while we are concerned about speaking up for the Liberian people. That is why you could never be president of the country, because you are all about yourself while we are all about the people. Now, that is a lesson for you. Thank you very much. God bless you. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Bye-bye.